Well, good morning. Hey, we're starting a new series called Staying in Love, and it's a series for those of you who are in relationships, have been in relationships for a long time, and for those of you who are looking at being in relationships, and um, it's going to be a four-week series that we, that we spend some time together, and we're going to be looking at some texts. This morning, we're going to be looking at just two texts, and they're very short, and we'll get to that in a second. But before we do that, um, I need to ask you a question, um, and I usually don't talk about this, uh, reference these in church, but I think it's a really good uh, reference in that. Has anyone in here seen the movie Juno? Okay. Does anyone in here plan to see the movie Juno? Okay, because I'm gonna, I may ruin it for you. Um, it, here's the deal: is that in the, in the movie, um, there's this movie Juno, and there's this girl who's a teenage girl, and she ends up getting pregnant. And um, in the process of her trying to figure out what she's going to do with this baby, she goes through all of the emotions of trying to to figure this out. From is this something where she wants to have an abortion to adoption, and she ends up deciding that she's going to. Um, have the baby and give it up for adoption. And um, in this whole process, she's got a relationship with this, this guy in school who it's, it's sort of an interesting relationship. And then she ends up meeting the parents of the, the, um, the, the couple that she's going, that are going to adopt her baby. And their relationship isn't quite that great. And then they end up uh, having a, a real frustrating relationship. And then she looks at the relationship of her her dad and her mom who have sort of split and and she asks this question and uh, in in the movie she she asks sits down with her dad and her dad is is really good in the movie and, and he as she's talking with him she asks this question and I think it's a question that regardless of if you have asked this question out loud I think it's a question that we ask especially in today's culture and in the environments that we live in when it comes to relationships. And, and the question that she asks, because we're going to put it up on the screen, is, is basically she says, she turns to her dad and she says, I guess I wonder sometimes if people ever stay together for good. Dad, I just need to know if it's possible for two people to stay together forever for good. I mean, that's a good question. I, it's a question, I think, that... For her, in the movie, she's looking around at the relationships with this couple that, that you know, she's going to, that are going to adopt her baby and the relationships that, uh, of her parents, and, and she's saying, you know, I need to know if it's possible for two people to stay together for good. And if that's not one where you have actually asked it out loud, I think it's one that we ask because we look around at, at the culture that we live in and, and we look at the, the examples, perhaps, that we have grown up with, and we, I think it's one that we ask. And the truth is that I think as we ask that question, for many of us, we say, yes, it's possible. And not only is it possible, it's possible for us. Now, l let me just see if I can give you an example of this. Is there anyone in here who has been married 40 years? If, if you are, can you stand up? Okay. No, 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 no. Stay standing. Stay standing. Have any of you been married 50? If you've been married 50 years, keep standing. If you haven't, then you sit down. And 60 years. Look at that. Sixty-five? No. <laughs> wow, I mean... How many years? How many? Sixty-seven. Now see, you could ask... That's, I mean, that's just amazing. You could ask this question, right? And, and you, you could take it out of church, and you could ask this question, and it would get the same response. It, it, you would, do, not ha do not have to be a Christian to sit there and look at people who have been dedicated to each other for 67 years, for 40 years, for 20 years, and the response across the board would be applause. And the reason why it would be applause is because we believe it's possible. 
You don't have to be a Christian to believe it's possible. And not only do we believe it's possible, we believe it's possible for us. The challenge with it comes when we begin to look at the culture around us. Because in spite of the rest of the world, in spite of the examples that we've been given, in spite of, of everything else, we think it's, it's possible. Even though the, the example that we may have been given that, that have, you know, of, of the relationships that we have seen may not necessarily have been the ones that we want to imitate, right? That we still think it's possible. But it may not be probable. It's possible, but it may not be probable. Now, we need about 10 minutes to talk about love because the truth of the matter is that that's about all it takes to, to fall in love. <laughs> and uh, come on, some of you know this is true. I mean, when you were a teenager, you were in love with people on TV who you never even met. <laughs> you put those pictures on your wall and you looked at those magazines, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. The truth is that it, in, the, in the love business today, there are 1,500 organizations that will specialize in helping you to fall in love. 1,500 organizations that will help you specialize in making that connection to fall in love. And so it's never been easier to fall in love, but it's also never been harder to stay in love. And this is a challenge for us. And it's really not confusing as to why it's that hard, because as we said, it's maybe not the best, we've been given the best examples. For some of us, we grew in, up in homes where our parents split. Uh, I grew up in a, in a home like this. Um, for many of us, we have very few examples of healthy relationships. We grew up in, in homes or, or we saw relationships or we looked at relationships on TV or, or with famous couples or, or with the people around us. And, you know, the example that you got was do unto others as your mood would dictate or do unto others until I feel like leaving or do unto others um, until I get everything that I need. Right? Maybe that's the example that you got. And so it's really no no question as to why we, we feel this way when, it's, when we have these, these struggles with relationships. In fact, there was a study that was done um, on children, and the study uh, was, was one that asked, uh, looked at what a child would need to be emotionally equipped to engage in long-term relationships. And the study was done by a bunch of famous people, and they came up with these things that a child needs to be able to be emotionally equipped to engage in long-term relationships. We'll put these up on the screen for you. And, and, what these, and, and, and this is massive amounts of these things. And for a, a child to be equipped for healthy relationships, the study revealed that, they, that these children need massive doses of respect, encouragement, security, comfort, attention, affection, support, acceptance, and approval. Massive amounts of respect, encouragement, security, comfort, attention, affection, support, acceptance, and approval. Now, if that's what it takes for a child to be emotionally equipped for, long, for a long-term relationship, then we are all at a disadvantage. I mean, we're all at a disadvantage because we grow up, and if we don't get these things, if we don't get massive amounts of these things, then we grow up looking to get these things from the people that we connect with. And so we go into those relationships and we say, this is what I want from you, massive amounts of respect, encouragement, security, comfort, attention, affection, support, acceptance, and approval. And if the person that you are in the relationship with didn't grow up with that as well, then they're looking at that from you. I mean, it's a disadvantage. There's another uh, statistic that comes out today, and this is a, a struggle for me because I, I really have a hard time with this statistic, but it, nonetheless, it continues to come out time and time again. It says that 40% of uh, child, children that are born into homes today will be born into single parent homes. The majority of those will be born into homes without a dad. And if it takes all of these things, respect, encouragement, security, comfort, attention, affection, support, acceptance, and approval, then they will immediately be at a, at a disadvantage. And yet, all of us in here are equipped to fall in love. And yet, all of us in here understand that it is hard to stay in love. 
Maybe the other reason, one of the other reasons why this happens is because um, the culture that we live in has a low threshold for pain. It's not to say that we should live with pain, but the truth is that when, if we don't feel it, then culture tells us that we should be out. Right? The message that we get from culture um, every day is that if you're not happy, then you chose poorly, and so you should rechoose. If you're not happy, then you should look at when you chose them. I mean, who makes the same decisions as in their 30s that they did in their 20s? I mean, it, you, you must not be happy, and so go find that thing that makes you happy, so you just rechoose. And, and when you rechoose, go rechoose until you just keep rechoosing, until you find what makes you happy. I mean, this is the message that we get from culture. If you read any GQ or Vogue or Cosmopolitan or anything like that, this is the message that comes out. And yet, if you ask couples who've been married for 20 years or more, and you, you talk to them about their relationship, they'll, they'll say that along the way, they wondered if this was the right person. They, they were just like you. But they decided along the way that they were going to be the right person and not the other way around, that they were going to say, well, you're not the right person. And so they chose to continue to, sit in, to stay, and if you talk to most of these folks, they would say, I'm, and I'm so glad that I stayed. Because choosing the right person is part of it, but learning to be and become the right person, now that's, that's something. So you may want to be in love, but the odds are against you. It's possible, but it's not probable. Aren't you glad we don't close in prayer there? Because <laughs> the truth of the matter is that the, the Bible, I mean, you, you got to read the Bible because the Bible's got a lot of great things to say. And into all this chaos of culture, um, that the truth is that we can relate to. Jesus speaks into this culture. And, and Jesus has these great verses uh, just words that come from his mouth 2,000 years ago that gives us the foundation for enduring love and enduring love in relationships. And the truth is that when I give you what this verse is, it is so simple. I mean, it, it is so simple, and it, because of that, we skip over it a lot. But the truth of the matter is that some of the simplest truths are some of the most important truths. And, and Jesus, as he talks, he's going to say something, and, and quite frankly, when you hear it, if we don't slow down and look at it, you're going you're gonna to be like, okay, that's great. What else you got? Because it, it, it really is that simple. But nonetheless, if two people will actually accept this basic teaching of Jesus, it has the foundation of setting a relationship just on this rock that continues to be lasting forever. And if you look at the relationships, I would dare say, of all the people that we had stand up, they learned this along the way, and they figured this out, and, and it is the thing, one of the things that has continued to allow them to, to value each other and spend time together. The verse that we're going to look at is found in the book of John, chapter 13. If you don't have your Bibles, then we'll put the verse up on the screen, and uh, if you do, it's John 13, chapter 34. So here's what it says. A new command I give you. Now, I know you're going to be tempted to read all the way through. Just stick with me in these, where, we, where we stop in the verse. The new command I give you. So when Jesus is saying new, right, the, the word new is actually a word that, that can also mean remarkable or it's out of the ordinary. So an out of, out of the ordinary command or a remarkable command I'm going to give you. And then he goes on to say what it's going to be. Love one another. That's it. Now see, if you listen to this, you, like I, would say, Zach, you should have studied harder. That's it? I mean, that's all you got? I mean, sure. But the thing that's so brilliant about this, I mean, it, it's just amazing, is that when Jesus says in this verse, love one another, he actually takes the word love and he transitions it. You see, the word love is something that for most of us, like Pastor Rochelle talked about earlier in the children's story, it's for what most of us use as a noun. It's a thing, right? We're in love. It's a thing. What Jesus does is he takes this word love and he turns it into a verb and he makes it an action. 
you need to be loving towards one another. You need to not just be in love. You need to not to just to be a feeling. The feeling is a thing. You need to actually go out and do it. You need to go out and, and be, uh, do this love thing. Jesus takes the word that's a noun and he turns it into a verb, which is amazing. Now, the reason why this is amazing is because for most of us, if you were listening to Jesus and he was your marriage counselor, he would make a bad marriage counselor because you would come and say, well, he doesn't do this or she doesn't do that. And what Jesus would say is he would say, well, are you loving her? And we would say, well, no, it's not about that. You see, we used to be in love, but we're not anymore because she doesn't do this. And he would say, but you're missing it. You're thinking about love as a noun as a feeling. You're not getting that feeling. See, your relationship started out as a feeling, right? And, and love was that feeling. It was the engine that drove your relationship. But the truth is that just like any relationship, it grows, and that thing, that feeling has to move to the back. It becomes the caboose of your relationship. It's not the engine. Because if it's all about the feeling, if it's all about the thing, then when you're not feeling the thing, then you're going to go out and look for someone else who's going to give you that thing. And Jesus would say, it's not about that. It's about loving. It's about doing. It's are you loving your significant other? Now, this is a challenge because for most of us, we end up looking at being in love and feeling in love. But the truth is that as Jesus talks about all this stuff, he would say that the foundation for staying in love for the long haul is to make love, pause, a verb. It's to make love a verb. All right, this is the, the foundation for a long relationship. Now, I realize that that's simple, and it may seem like that's, you know, just the easiest thing. And maybe that's not just the newest thing. And maybe that's what, not what Jesus is talking about when he says, a new command I give you. Because we would say, well, yeah, I... I Okay, sure, I'll make love a verb, but then he goes on to say this at the end, and he says, and this is how I want you to do it. This is how I want to teach you how to make love a verb, as I have loved you. I want you to make love a verb. I want you to go out and love one another as I have loved you. I don't want you to get your cues from culture. I don't want you to get your cues from famous relationships. I don't want you to get your cues from the latest article in Cosmo or GQ or Men's Journal or Vogue. Or I don't want you to get your cues from those. There are plenty of cues. I want you to get your cue for how to love one another, for how to love each other as I have loved you. I want you to get it from me. I want to teach you how to love as a verb. I want you to look at my actions. I want you to look at it's how I will teach you how to love as a verb. Now, later on, there's a guy by the name of Paul, a few chapters later, or what we call in the Bible, a few books later, and he's writing a letter. He's a, a follower of Jesus, and he's writing a letter to a group of people who live in the town of Ephesus. And they're called the Ephesians. And he, as he writes this letter, he says the exact same thing as Jesus says when he says, love one another. But the truth is that he actually puts a bad word in the, the, what he's going to say. And, and so he puts a bad word in there, and, and he, he says the exact same thing, and, and here it is in, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. He, see the bad words right there in the beginning. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, right? This is the, the, the bad thing. Uh, the word submit, actually, uh, if you were to con continue to read after verse 21 and continue to go in verses 22 and on, he begins to have this lengthy conversation about husbands and wives. But the word submit actually means similar to the same thing of, of love one another. It just takes it a step further. The word submit actually means that in our relationship, you are the priority, not me. And, and in our relationship, uh, I am the, the priority for you and not you. And, and it's this proverbial, which is so confusing and it seems so, so weird at times, but it's the... We, we come to the door, and, and you and me are, are coming to the door, and here, I'll open the door, and you go first, and you say, well, no, you're the priority. I'm submitting to you. You're here. I'll open the door, and you go first, and we just stand there until we figure out who's going to go first, because my priority is you, and your priority is me, and this is just us being together. Submit to one another. 
The big conflict in your relationship should not be, well, I'm not feeling it. It should be, am I going, how am I going to make them the priority today? Above my, above my kids, above my job, second only to God, how am I going to make them the priority today in everything that I do? The word submit means to place yourself under another person, not because of anything else except it's your choice. Now, that may freak some of you out, but the thing is that you're not choosing to place yourself um, under me so that I can lord myself over you. I'm choosing to submit to you because I realize that you are the priority in my life. Now, the thing about this is that this seems so strange, but if you have ever seen this, and it is so rare in, our, in the culture that we live in, but if you have ever seen a couple who, do, who does this, there is something in us that says, that's what I want. Right, that, that's what I want. I, I want that. I mean, that thing that says, do you really think couples can stay together? And we say, yes, we really do think couples can stay together. And all of us have these things in our heads that say, one day we're going to sit in the nursing home together and hold hands. And that's what we're going to do. And everyone else is going to, you know, be around us. And when I, you know, when I can't hardly eat and, you know, we're going to do that together. We're going to have our own walkers, and we're going to walk down the, the, in the park together. That's going to be you and me, right? And that's a lot more. That, that Moving into that type of relationship is a lot more than, baby, you got what I need. <laughs> it's a lot more than, man, you drive a great car. It's a lot more than, man, you're so hot. I mean, if, if we listen to the words of Jesus, and, and in the words of the Bible, Jesus says, I want you to love others as, as I have loved you. I want you to look at me as the example. And then I want you to even take it a step further and, and say, I want you to submit. Make them the priority in your life. I mean, when you wake up today, I want the biggest thing. I mean, I realize you're going to have a ton of things to think about today in your job and with your kids and, and all sorts of other things that are going to come into play. But I want the biggest thing, your number one priority, to be that person. I want you to submit. I want you to find a way today that, that they will become the number one priority in your life and you will be the number one priority in their life. You know, I get to see a lot of great things as a pastor, but quite frankly, as a pastor, this is one of the greatest things that I ever get to see is when there's a couple who does not grow up with any of this stuff and the, the husband or the man doesn't see this and the, and the wife doesn't see this. Um, and they, they had bad examples growing up. Uh, not, they, they, they had examples of relationships that weren't necessarily that healthy. And somewhere along the way, they, they, Jesus continues to, to reach into their life and they discover Jesus. And, they, and they, they sort of realize these sort of truths that Jesus has been talking about for 2,000 years. And they take these truths of Jesus, these values of Jesus, and they begin to put them into their lives. And they begin to say, you know, look, we, we didn't have the greatest examples. Or, or look, culture tells us that, the, you know, all the statistics say that, you know, it's 50-50 and whatever. But they begin to turn the, the statistics upside down. And it's, oh, the only reason is, is because they begin to, to put each other first. And they begin to, to act on love as a verb and not just a noun. And not just a feeling. It's not just a, a thing that I, that I feel. It, it, it's something where I actually do and I, and I put you first every day. We take our submission cues from Jesus on his behalf because of what he's done, because of the example that he has set for us. It's possible for two people to stay together forever. But it's not because you fall in love. It's because you make love a verb. It's because you look at the example of Jesus, because you make the other person the priority every day. And when you do that, you actually have the ability to feel that love thing become stronger on a regular basis. Picking the right person is important, but more important is deciding to make love the verb. To every single day, choose to make love the verb, which is much different 
then you got what I want, baby. Falling in love is, is a great thing, but staying in love is the challenge. And I realize that this is such a complicated topic, and, and we are going to be talking about this for four weeks. And you may be sitting there and saying, I don't agree with you. I'm a, I don't like what you said. And th- I, I hope you come back because w- we have three more weeks that we're going to talk about this stuff, and we're going to open up verses in the Bible. But I, here's, here's the deal is that today I, I want to finish um, with a homework for, for everyone in here. And, and this is for people who are thinking about dating or, or um, dating or in, in a committed relationship together. And w- a couple of things, I have two things I want you to do. And the deacons are going to come down and hand these out to you. Um, we're, next week, we're going to look at this verse in Philippians. And this verse is so loaded with just great stuff that what I want to do is I want to give you this verse this week, and I want you to take it home, and I want you to look at it, if you would look at it. This is my homework for you, this challenge for you. I want you to look at it this week. I want you to put it in a place where you can look at it, whether it's in your car dashboard or on your refrigerator or wherever it is. I want you to look at that just so that we can come prepped because there's so much stuff in this verse that we're going to talk about next week. And then on the back, there are questions that you can ask. Now, for those of you who are married, don't ask your spouse these questions. It, well, you can if you want, but I'm just telling you, I just don't, I would, I would recommend not to, but it's up to you. Um, ask yourself these questions, okay? Um, I want you to, to think about these questions, and, and uh, th- this applies to a whole bunch of different types of relationships, but we're going to be talking about this for the next couple weeks. So this is your homework, um, your first thing of homework for, for next week. Now, the second part of homework that I have for you is this, is that it actually is a, a four-week um, long homework, and it's this. It's to take the great date challenge. Now, you saw our purple couch interviews. Uh, basically, we took four couples, uh, another one that we're going to show you next week, and we asked them all to go out on dates. And I realized that some of you, it was just Valentine's Day, and, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm done with dating for like the next three months, <laughs> right? I get that. We're going to ask you in the next four weeks to go out on two dates, okay? And that's it. We're going to ask you to go out on, on two dates in the next four weeks. And we realize that sometimes it's a challenge to know what to do or to break the conundrum. So actually, if you go on the church website today, there is a, a button on the bottom that says the Great Date Challenge. And we give you four dates that you can go on. And you can download them. And you can, it'll, there are dates on communication. And, and they're fun. And, and you don't have to do our dates, but... Don't, don't go on the website if, if you don't want to do our dates because they're really good dates. Um, you can do your own, okay? But we're going to challenge you in the next four weeks to go on two dates. Now, if you are like me and you have children and you're thinking, yeah, but I got kids and a babysitter and a uh, time and you know, I can't help you with your time. You're going to have to figure out your schedule. But I can help you with your babysitter, Okay. We have a a high school youth group uh, with responsible, dedicated high school students who are willing to be your babysitter for free. You don't have to pay. In fact, even if you try to pay them, they will not take your money. Okay? We, We... Talk to Pastor Todd. He's going to do an announcement about it next week. They will not take your money. All right? So we've tried to take everything out that, that we possibly can so that you can, you can go on dates. So here's the deal, okay? Look at the, the sheet. We've got the, the verse for next week. You look at it this week. Go through the questions. Be careful if you want to go through it with your spouse or not, okay? And then uh, take the, the date challenge, and um, you can download those dates on the, the website, and um, then we'll, we'll look forward to hearing from you. At the end of the day, here's the thing is that we think it's possible. The culture that we live in shows us that it's not probable. Jesus says, I want to show you how to make love the verb. Because if it's just a noun, then it's just a thing. But I think it's an action, Jesus says. And over the next few weeks, we're going to look at what that actually means. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of relationships. 
And the truth is that um, it is not the easiest thing. The truth is that many of us struggle with time. Our, our schedules get so full of stuff. And yet, it's this great tool that you use to communicate how much you care about us. Many of us have not necessarily had the greatest examples or been in the greatest examples of this type of relationship. And yet, as we read the Bible, you continue to point out how much you care for us and how much you want good things for us and for our relationships. May you continue to be the God who sets our foot on the right path. May you give us encouragement and guidance. In your name we pray. Amen.